Would it be a normal week if I didn't talk about how Dungeons & Dragons is one of the worst games imaginable? Oh, this the, another article comes across my desk from CBR this time. It's talking about Dungeons & Dragons, how it's influenced by Lord of the Rings, and how the fantasy genre is racist. Dungeons & Dragons still bears the Lord of the Rings influence, for better or for worse. Remember that comic strip, for better or for worse? It, it, it was feel-good knowledge that no matter what happened, you took it with a grain of salt and just dealt with it as if it didn't matter. As Dungeons & Dragons goes through yet another period of corporate wolves, elements of racist legacy inherited from Lord of the Rings lives on. Yay! Get your pitchforks now, folks. I can see another another reason that you need to put down those books and put them away or tell Wizards of the Coast you gotta change the fantasy genre. I'm sorry, it's the fantasy genre. If you can't figure out that fantasy and reality don't, don't belong together, then don't play the damn game and stay in reality. How about does that sound? How about you take your imagination up here in your brain? Oh wait, a lot of people that are writing this garbage don't have an imagination. They can't fathom being able to sit there and swing a sword against a dragon, let alone have, a, have your comrade be a different skin color in your game because that's something that happens. Oh my god! Fantasy was indefinitely changed by the Lord of the Rings, novels written by J.R.R. Tolkien. From the way the fantasy narratives were written to how the words were, worlds were built, there is little that wasn't touched or altered by Tolkien. His novels make out the fantasy, what fantasy would be for the next near century. However, this influence comes with downsides, though Tolkien was quite progressive for his time. He was very progressive and a linguist. Several of the ideas and implications in The Lord of the Rings were based upon antiquated, problematic, and outright racist ideas. To whom? When he wrote this stuff, those ideas that you guys, that these people continue to push, didn't exist. The ideas that they want to come up have grown over time and even to today don't exist to the Tolkien work. Tolkien was a linguist. He, he understood language. He understood cultures and actually borrowed from a bunch of different cultures when it came down to it. Yes, but he didn't make it in a racist eye. He made the orcs as the stormtroopers from World War II Germany. He wrote the novels in essence of his fallen comrades in the war. Enter Dungeons and Dragons, the fantasy-based role-playing game first published a mere 20 years after Tolkien's writing, almost 50 years ago now. Given the sweeping, sweeping stranglehold that Lord of the Rings had over fantasy, it was only natural that D&D would mimic many of its aspects. By, by you mean dragons? By, by you mean people going to war and battle? By you mean the Inquisition and the Knights Templar and how things evolved over time, how legends became born? Tolkien wasn't the only thing on the block that, that created legends and dragons and demons and angels and everything like that. Hell, for uh, top of my head comes Beowulf. Then you have werewolves, you have vampires. Like, there is so much more to just fantasy than Lord of the Rings and saying that Dungeons and Dragons is derivative directly from Lord of the Rings. No, Dungeons and Dragons is a rule set at this point, and that's been set, set out now by Wizards of the Coast. That it's literally just a rule set how to play in a fantasy style genre. Lord of the Rings brought together an amazing story and put it to the forefront and people were captivated by it. Unlike the stories that we get today, where 95% of them don't even live up to the pages that they're written on. Though Dungeons & Dragons have seen more of its fair of share controversy, the results of these racist ideas still haunt it today. 
Dungeons and Dragons classes are parody from Tolkien. Well, Ranger was born from Tolkien, was it not? Um, for for in particular, but they every every little bit of fantasy has influenced the next bit of fantasy, and that's how it's continued to go along. Like, would we still have a dragon today if it wasn't for Lord of the Rings? I would say so. I would say so. I don't think Lord of the Rings was the only thing that really stood out there. Um, when I think of dragons now, like, it, they're everywhere. It, it's just part of fantasy. Hell, Dragonheart is one of my favorite movies. And that was with Sean Connery. Like, it, it, it's... I, I just don't get it. I don't get why there is this continuation of the narrative to try and make Dungeons and Dragons be the most racist thing in the world. Hell, in the D&D Beyond statement over the SRD 5.1 scenario of it going into the creative commons, Wizards of the Coast executive producer Dungeons and Dragons stated that because of the pushback, it showed how inclusive and how open this game and genre is. Putting to rest the racist rhetoric from these journalists that continue to push against the narrative. They continue to push against the game. Essentialism rules on Dungeons and Dragons races. The problematic portion entering when looking into the concept of essentialism, which states that uh, all members of a group do or believe something similar because that's what they are. Common stereotypes like girls loving pink and all drow being evil fall to this. Drow at the time were created as uh, servients to Loth, the evil spider god. Which actually Wizards of the Coast put on a when they did the Magic the Gathering, Enter the Baldur's Gate D&D set, they put it Loth as one of the Planeswalkers. This belief that a group of beings, or as Tolkien and D&D call them, a race, can essentially be good or evil is beyond antiquated. It's just racist. It's fantasy and you need villains. That's why they do it. If that was the case, then maybe you'd, you might want to tune up some Goblin Slayer and watch people, watch them go in and completely slaughter innocent, unbelievably innocent goblin little creatures that are going to grow up and rape and pillage the next village over. <laughs> The, the, this is the genre that we've chosen to create as a medium, is a fantasy genre. Things are not nice. Things are not good in this world that we live in. Drow are not humans. They are elven creatures, thus a fantasy made-up creature that does not exist. There's drow that are good. Dritz comes to mind particularly. One of my favorite all-time heroes in the Forgotten Realms. I've, re I, I've, I've read many of R.A. Salvador's works. And Dritz was the one character that I solely connected with when it came to characters of class. Hell, I, I can remember our D&D quests. Our DM brought in a literal demon that was bound as good. Good aligned demon. That's, that's, that's what we played with. It was twisted. It was a very strange all ultimate scenario, but the demon was good, mainly because it was the offspring of a succubus, which didn't necessarily mean it was born to evil. Right? We, we've never played with that idea, and a lot of people don't. Now, inherently bad, when you get goblins, when you get bugbear, when, when you get hobgoblins, kobolds, when you have a lot of different 
fantasy creatures that are humanoid in nature, not necessarily are... Ra the, the, it doesn't come down to it as it's a racist thing. They're built up as monsters. The drow, when they were originally created, were actually a monster in the manual and never about being a sub... A, a different race of elf. And it has grown since then. And now it's spawned to something different where drow walk among all the other elves now. But they're no longer drow. They're just seen as elves with darker skin. Drow, in particular, live close to the... Live underground in a societal means where they will always worship a, uh, a evil deity. That, that, that's the difference with the drow. It's the society was the evil part. The drow necessarily were not. But the evil society that was around them is the evil part. They, they're more like a cult-like society. And that's why they became what they became. And that was a telling point for these books. And a much different story back when I was 18. Today, do you write something like that? A lot of people don't generally write like that. But at the same time, some good came out of it. It's like the yin and yang. In every yin, there's a little bit of yang. In every yang, there's a little bit of yin. It, 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 it's how it goes. It, it's philosophy. It, it, it's societal. Right? So if you are just going to sit there and knock that this one thing or these couple things in, in the storytelling is straight up racist and they shouldn't belong, then what do you have left to actually tell your fantasy story? I guess that means that the black dragon that spits acid at you. Oh, they're all good. They're all good. It, it, she's not going to eat you. She's not going to eat you. The red dragon that breathes fire at you. They're, gonna, they're not going to eat you. They're just going to come up and cuddle with you, breathe some fire on your steak so you can have something well, well cooked and, and eaten instead of this raw piece of steak that's going to make you sick. You know, every little bit, you've got a gold dragon. They sit there and they love their money. But they also, they, they, they don't uh, see the bad in everything and try and look for the good. It, it, it's ridiculous to sit here and have to read these articles week after week after week at this point. And honestly, journals, you're not gaining anything by doing this. What, what do you want? What do you want from this? Because if you're going to continue pushing this type of narrative, Wizards of the Coast is going to sit there and keep writing it out of the story, and then you're left with you're not even left with a playset. Oh, well, they've already given away to the Creative Commons, so who cares? Who cares? Play the game the way you want to play. Keep the gaming fun and enjoy what you what you earn. Thanks for watching this proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. Signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>